Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, we're gonna be talking more about layouts and how to, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to use uh, uh, Beaver Builder within your project. So uh, we are in the actual Beaver Builder um, interface right now. I've actually changed the top bar into a darker color and you could do that by clicking on the tab here and you could change the UI brightness by clicking here. You could also choose the uh, letter zero and that zero. There is a letter called zero. You can choose the letter O and that should also change it here too. So I like the dark ones. I'm going to keep the dark one for now so then you can see the difference between the uh, the content and the uh, the other bit. So if you can see here, I've just hovered my mouse over the text and you will see like a dark blue um, border and you will see a light blue border. Now the dark blue border, this is going to be hard to say, the dark blue border is the actual row okay and a row i can make that row full width i can make it um fixed currently it's on a fixed you could tell because it's in the middle um but i can make this full width so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first click on this wrench or spanner here and i'm going to change the color of it so as you can see the row has a number of different settings and I'm going to change the background color to, let's just change it to black for now. I can move this and you can see that the changes automatically take place. I'm going to move it actually to a little bit of a lighter black because black black is too much for me. Okay, that's better. So as you can see, this is a fixed width row. I can make this full width by clicking here. So now it's gone full width and I can even make this row be the same height as the screen. So I can click here where it says content width and I can go full width, I can go full height. You see I can even go fixed and full height. Okay, I could also align this content to the top or I could align it to the bottom but center is usually the best place to go. You could also update the text color within here and the link color. So let's try that color. You can see it's all happening. And we could also do like a link hover color if we need to. And there's no headings in there, but we can put a heading in there if we need to. So we'll change it to that green. We can add photos to the background if we need to a video if we need to slideshow and we could also make it parallax i'm going to keep it on color and we can add borders etc etc in the advanced tab we can add margins if we need to so i can add like a 50 pixel margin on the top you can see it's moved and the really cool thing about this is that next to it you will see that there is an icon here which represents the desktop screen. I can click and it will move into tablet mode and I can set an individual setting for the tablet mode. So I can say, right, I want it to a 100 pixel uh, margin on the top on tablet mode and on a mobile i want it to have a 50 pixel margin but on a desktop i want it like a 400 pixel margin so you could see that no matter which one it's on it's going to change which is super handy because not a lot of um page builders give you this ability to control that um responsive setting and the same can be said about the padding as well you can do exactly the same thing with the padding um, another great feature about the rows is that you um, can and to be fair the advanced tab is on most of the rows and most of the modules like all of the rows and all of the modules you would find the advanced tab and they are pretty much all have the same type of setting so the responsive layout this is also really good because say if um uh, you can choose where this gets displayed so if i only want it to be displayed on desktop 
I can choose large devices only or if I only want this particular row to be displayed on mobile I can choose that as well okay um, or I can choose large and medium devices medium and small devices so again there's different things that you know your your creativity should be spiraling out of control now as you think about the different uses that you can have for disabling certain rows and modules in um, just by clicking on this tab here you've also got visibility tab which is really cool I did a tutorial recently about setting up a membership site and this came in super handy because you can set things to be seen by people who are logged into your website and people who are not logged into your website so that's also another one that you could do um, and here you can put your individual um, IDs if you need to and you can put your individual classes if you need to as well so that is me adding a um, um, settings to that module and as you could see because I didn't save it I pressed cancel it went straight back to how it was before so if you just want to play around for a while don't worry about breaking anything just just don't press save and you should be fine now inside this row is a module and uh, sorry inside this row there's a module and there's a column and it's only got one column in it. Now of course your whole website is not going to be one column you may have different columns within it and you can easily add columns by clicking on this plus sign here and you will see we've got a number of tabs here if we click on row then we can choose what type of column we want. Now in order to bring this column over here, all we need to do is click on it and drag it wherever we need it to go. Okay, so I can actually drag it inside that row and make two columns inside that row. That's what we call um, um, nesting or I can drag out another two columns and I can put those two columns in here. And again, I've just nested the columns. I could also drag out two columns and not put it in any row and it will make its own row, you see? And because I've got my setting, as you can see, this, this row here um, is a fixed row, but this row here is not a fixed row. Because remember, in the last um, tutorial, I set my default settings to make this full width. So every time I drag out a, um, a, a row, it's automatically going to be full width. Um, but of course, if I don't want that, I can just go in and change that. It's not a problem. So like I said, the default settings, they're there, but they're not set in stone. Okay. So that's a really good thing about having uh, these these rows and these columns and look I've got six columns here I can just drag that underneath the first column and I can put whatever I want in there now these columns are not fixed I can literally move these if I need to there's even a setting to reset them so then they can all equally be the same width and you do that by clicking on this um, icon here I don't even know what I would call that icon but it's this icon here that looks like a book I guess um, and you will click where it says reset column widths okay and it will reset it to what it was originally so I think this one was oh no this is a nested one isn't it so let's click that out you see you can take away um, the um, you could take away the columns just by deleting them so let's move this one and let's reset the column widths and as you can see they've all reset to three okay now say if I've got three there but I want to add another one now there's a duplicate here but as you could see it will duplicate it to the next row so by right I can add many of these if I want to okay and it would all be responsive so when I start resizing the screen it should all work responsively which is another great thing that uh, Beaver Builder does now just to speed things up I'm going to drag out this module and put it above and I'm going to delete that because I can't be bothered to delete all those boxes now 
you can drag out so that's one way to add a module but then you can also drag out one column from here and just notch it right on the side and that would also make three columns as well now each column has their own individual settings so with this column i can choose to have a different background color if i wanted to than the rest another thing you could do is if i just grab this module and drop that in there um, i can duplicate this module i haven't quite spoken about modules yet but i will do um, in the next one so let's have a look I can drag this module over here something weird is happening there but you could see um, we've got some text here I can just delete some of this text out and press save now let's say I put a background color in here so I've got a red and let's say I go in here and I delete some of this text. So you can see here we've got text which is completely um, different sizes. And if I add a background color to them, um, you could see that it doesn't quite look nice. So what you can do, which is a really cool setting, is you can equalize the heights. Um, if you click on edit column and you go to column set settings, there is an option here that says equalize the column heights and if I just move this over here and I click yes what you see is now all the heights of the columns will be the same and that looks much better let me turn down the color of the text because it's a little bit too much okay so again play around with the different options within um, the layouts. You can have as many layouts as you want with completely different features on there. Um, I'm just playing around with the background colors because it's the quickest thing that I can do right now. But there are all different things that you can do in terms of your layout. And what is really good about this is the fact that you can nest before we couldn't do that. So I can have a column here and I can place another four columns in there. Okay, so again, your brain must be ticking with all creativity in different ways that you can actually use um, this feature. So um, yeah, that is practically it for, um, uh, for this tutorial. But one thing I did want to speak about was um, the ways that you could save this um, row. So for instance, say if I want to use this again, I can just click on the uh, spanner and click on save as and I can call this something and here it says global which means basically um, will if, if the text is never ever going to change within this and I'm going to use this over and over for instance if I had a subscription form and I wanted people to put their name and email address in it. Now I know that's not gonna change throughout the site, so I can make that a global setting. Um, but if um, I had like a button, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to make that global. Um, but I'll explain more about that when we talk about modules. But for now, if I just wanna save a row, um, I don't necessarily want it to be global, I can just click it as something, and that's now saved which means now when I click on the content and I click on saved, something is here and I can drag that out and reuse that again. Now, you might think to yourself, well, I could have just duplicated that row, which you can do up here. If you click on duplicate, it duplicates the row again. But say if you're not on this page, say if you've created a brand new page, you cannot duplicate that row. So that's why these things come in handy in terms of reusing it throughout the site again, without you having to redo this whole thing again. So. Um, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please leave a message or a comment below and I'll try and answer it. But let's move now on to the uh, module settings.